Hey guys, it's been a while since I made a video. I'm just doing a little video here in Ukraine with my friend Arthur. Hi guys. Drinking some uh, espresso. How's it going buddy? It's doing quite well. So, how are you guys? <laughs> so bad. So I've known Arthur for four years now and he's uh, grown up into a pretty good developer, um, leader as well. And he works for me, some of my UK clients and um, he's based in Ukraine, but also he travels quite a bit. So how are you finding the whole, um, as, a, as a young entrepreneur, the whole JavaScript, HTML scene, developing for the, the browser and that, do you, do you like it? Well, I, I actually started with just developing front-end stuff for the browser, but now I'm realizing, so like, the Google Chrome runs on V8 engine, and it also works with Node.js, because I used to be, you know, studying PHP and all this stuff, but JavaScript is actually like better way for me mm -hmm. to go around things because like you can use Node.js and browser, so like backend and frontend if you want to be full stack developer, which I am trying to be. Mm -hmm. And how are you finding the whole uh, web development industry in Ukraine? Do you think it's going to bring a lot of income to the economy here eventually? For sure, man. I mean, like it's really like the salaries for developers in Ukraine is like one of the highest salaries around the country in general, mm -hmm. like IT business. Well, I think IT salaries are all around the world are like pretty high, but in Ukraine it's like specifically, like you can see the contrast with the people. Mm -hmm. Like some people will make, I don't know, like $300 a month and like good developers can make like 2000 and more dollars a month. Yeah, I mean, Ukraine is not cheap anymore for developers. A lot of people, yeah. know, five, 10 years ago, I think it's, uh, you could just dump your projects in Ukraine and um, be yeah, cheap, yeah. but um, the prices are rising because the developers here are, are good. Yeah, I, I mean, if you look at the India and Ukraine, there are like some benefits of Ukraine for sure, like the time zones, the position, just the you know more of the Western culture here than India. Mm -hmm. Like people are, you know, it's easier to understand, I guess, in some ways. But it's also like why to overpay your engineers in like London or in the states where you can outsource some of them like for some teams you know it's a good idea mm -hmm. yeah so the advantage of ukraine is versus countries um you know like like india uh you know pakistan yeah china and stuff is that we are only two hours ahead here in ukraine and so we, we have the term near shoring versus offshoring mm -hmm. so you're um the developers here are not going to be like really tired because I've worked with you know I feel sorry sometimes for the people in India they're they're working like yeah going home at like ten o'clock at night at eleven o'clock at night still yeah. working for UK clients which is fine but um, mm. it just seems like there's there's less strained relationship when you're working with developers in, in Ukraine um, yeah I think where if you want to write quality code it's not necessarily so it'll be happening in your office because like there's like git systems right there are code reviews there are quality standards there are frameworks so like if everybody writing the same code or so you just if you make sure that your team is on the same page i don't think it's like necessary to have them in the office mm -hmm. most of the companies like huge companies doesn't have the one office either way like like Google, they have offices all around the world and they're prob probably writing like tons of code, right? Mm -hmm. So yes, they do have offices, but it's not necessarily that the teams are working remotely anyway. Mm -hmm. Like New York works with Los Angeles and London works with New York and it's fine. I mean, but like, so why don't you use the same model for Ukraine? Mm -hmm. So yeah. you, you, you also quite a lot of American business, don't you? Uh, I do a lot of websites for the United yeah. States right now because I see the market there and like the need because again the prices for websites if it's not like just even outsourcing the team if you just want to make like one website or one project why not go to Ukrainian developer like like mm -hmm. me mm -hmm. you know so how do you find the time difference between you and America is it manageable for you or are you walking up quite late at night as well because just like six at Eight hours behind you or something? No, but honestly, I'm more of the entrepreneurial mindset. Like, I don't really focus on 
uh, programming that much in the sense of where I don't really want to write code myself that much, mm -hmm. where I want to build the teams, where I want to manage stuff like marketing. And uh, I want to build my own companies, So, which I already have one. It's like findlabs.tech, where some people can check out. And yeah, I'll put it in a link in the description. Yeah, you guys can see. You guys also have QuantumJS, go there as well. <laughs> yeah, I've updated that web page in like a year. <laughs> I'm so busy with <laughs> stuff. That's okay, I'll update it soon more. Yeah. Um, okay, so, um, are you, you got any coffee left, man? Yeah. Can I put a little uh, espresso in a Ukrainian hotel this month? <laughs> so what advice would you give to people on the younger half of life, say younger than 40 years old? Uh, how would you get into web development in Ukraine? How would you start? <clears throat> so yeah, basically, I don't know if your viewers know, but I'm 19. So I already have... 19 years old? I already have... I already have a year and a half experience working for companies like... Like one of the companies where I used to work, it's uh, used to work with Magento, and I used to be like one of their code reviewers and the QA tester, and I wrote a few lines. Magento. But, yeah, <laughs> it's actually uh, they've been sold for like 1.7 billion dollars for Adobe, like last year. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think that things are going well there. So my advice for young entrepreneurs or young developers, I guess really take your time on studying code because a lot of people you know impatient this generation impatient. i'm impatient myself you yeah you all and you guys always wanting things instantly you know yeah like like hey i want to be a programmer i want to make thousands and thousands of dollars but like start small yeah. six hours a day I, I, for eight months studying you then you'll maybe get a job <laughs> i i think start small but don't think small though like think big but start small if that makes sense you know, start with, if you, well, basically try to figure out what is your main point, what is your main skill, like front end or back end. Like me, I love to design stuff, I love, I love marketing, but I also love algorithms, I love the logic behind the code. So I love full stack stuff. So if you are more of the design, design person, or you're more of the mass or algorithms or I don't know just you like to make fun stuff so probably go with full stack but it's up to you guys really I think if you're full stack you can make more money but if you are so think this there are such things as state of JavaScript 2019 state of whatever 2019 Google this stuff and it'll tell you the exact technologies that our company using right now like for example if you want to be a good front-end developer you should know JavaScript for sure you should know at least one of the modern frameworks or libraries like React, Vue.js, Angular. And yeah, just get yourself to the next level. If you don't want to be junior, probably get on like code standards, like use callbacks, just better structure for your code components, you know, so all this stuff. So the structure and practice and practice. Cool. Well, there you have it folks, 19 year old entrepreneur um a lot of self-talk but he's doing doing really well so um thanks arthur for coming on yeah yeah thanks for having channel. me for short videos yeah that are very spontaneous but it's yeah it's so spontaneous people like spontaneous stuff you know yeah so, i mean no one natural likes, no one likes scripted videos not yeah. i don't even have a proper mic this morning but you guys got it you can hear me cool see you next time guys peace out guys Pew.